Okay, this week you're going to be looking a little bit at vectors. Um, we're going to talk about uh, how to represent vectors. Vectors are important because they help us present uh, the quantities of distance, velocity, acceleration, forces, uh, rotational quantities like torque, all sorts of things uh, can be re represented by vectors. Uh, so let's really quickly go, go review uh, some vectors and then we're going to talk about how you add vectors, how you subtract vectors, and how you uh, do the products of vectors. So a vector is just a quantity that has both uh, direction and magnitude. And so if I draw a vector, we have a starting point, uh, usually called its tail, and then we have its ending point, which we call the tip. And we usually denote the vector with some variable and then a line on top of it that just tells us uh, that this is a vector quantity. In your book, you'll also see these vectors uh, bolded. Um, this is another way of d displaying that these have vector quantities. Um, so that means we have to worry about both uh, the distance that this thing travels so how long that is, and we usually write that with just the uh, variable without the vector symbol. And then we have to worry about its direction. And the direction can be given uh, as an angle, usually if we have like an x-y axis, so let's put a y axis here and an x axis here, so that's x, that's y, then we can denote the angle here would give us a direction. Uh, sometimes, uh, typically, that angle is is measured from the x-axis. Although, you know, if you're doing compass directions, it would be measured from north, from the y-axis. Uh, but that gives you the direction um, of of the vector. So you can say that you know I'm going to walk uh, 25 meters north by northeast, and that's going to give you direction and magnitude. Um, when we're talking about uh, adding vectors, um, we can uh, look at something called the resultant vector. So let's take um, two vectors, and I'm going to just put another vector on here. I'm going to call it B. Okay, so we have two vectors, A and B, and the question is, what's the sum of those things? Um, there's three ways to, to do the, the sum of the vectors, or at least to determine the um, the direction of the resultant vector. Uh, the first one is uh, graphically. So basically I can take a ruler and I can measure the distance that that vector is and I can measure the angle. And I'm just going to try and mimic this here. So there's my uh, vector A. And then I take the other vector and I simply move it and add it to the tip of the previous vector. So there's my vector b that gives me both the direction and the magnitude. I can just set it right there, kind of mark it off. Right? If you want to be precise, you can use your ruler, but there's my b vector right there. And that means the resultant vector is that one right there. We'll call that c. And the way we would write that algebraically is we would say that c is equal to a plus b. And you'll notice that it has uh, taken into account not only the lengths of A and B, but also the direction that they're going. Right. So that's going to give us the resultant uh, vector C. Now there's another way that you can add these components or add these vectors, and that's by using components. We can break these vectors up into components, and we can call that the x dimension of this vector and the y dimension of that vector. We can do the same thing for b here. Drop this down and call this the x dimension of b. And this is the uh, y dimension of b. And then you can say that the x dimension of c is just how far we go in a, right? That's ax, plus how far we go in b along the x direction. And then we can say the y component is going to be equal to the direction we go in y, or the how far a goes in the y direction. So there's that. That's the a component. Plus uh, the, the, a com the b component in the y direction, which is going to be that right there. Right? So that's how far uh, we add that on to A 
uh, to get the total distance that it's going to go. And then you'll notice that that point here and that point here give us our resultant vector c, just like before. So that's the second way we can do this in terms of components. Um, another way of doing this is, is doing this in terms of the uh, angles uh, and using trigonometry. So let's go back uh, and look at this angle right here. Right, This is our angle at a for our a vector. We'll call that theta a. I have a triangle here, so I can write down um, the uh, components of this in terms of the angle. So I can say ax is equal to the magnitude of a times the cosine of that angle, because that is the adjacent angle there, so that's the cosine. And then my y component is going to be equal to the magnitude of a times the sine of that angle. And then I can do the same thing for b. bx is equal to the magnitude of b times the cosine of angle b. And again, this is measured from the y-axis. That's the angle b. And then the y component is the magnitude of b times the angle, sine of the angle b. Same thing with c. Cx is equal to the magnitude of uh, c times the cosine of theta c, which is now this full angle right there, right? Because it's relative to the um, x-axis. And the y component of c is the sine of that angle. And so I can compute what these components are uh, using the angles and the magnitudes uh, and add those up. So those are, those are three ways of, of doing vector additions by using the, um, just graphically drawing it on there, by using the components or by breaking the, the components up by the angles and the magnitude and doing the calculation to, uh, to get the different components. Okay, so that's our adding of vectors. Uh, let's talk about vector products for a second. So let's go back to our uh, two vectors, a and b. So here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis. I'm going to draw two vectors, vector a and vector b, like that. And the question is, how do we, um, how do we calculate the product between these two vectors? Well, it depends on what type of product we're talking about. Um, we can um, ask what the... Um, the dot product is of these two vectors, and that is effectively like taking one of these vectors and projecting it down onto the other through some angle theta. So if I were to um, ask what is the dot product a dot b, I'm basically projecting b onto a and then multiplying them together. So I get the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. So this is that projection of B onto A, and then I'm multiplying that with the magnitude of A. So that's going to give me my, my dot product. And this is a scalar quantity, uh, which tells us um, the effectively how, how much of this B vector is, is uh, overlapping with this uh, A vector. And if we look at the cosine here, what that means is if I have two vectors that are in the same direction as one another, right? there's no angle between them. Cosine of 0 is 1, so that's just going to be A times B. Okay, Because the cosine um, of the angle is 1. And so there's no, there's, we have cosine of 0 here. The cosine of 0 is 1. So that's just going to be a times b. Um, if I have them perpendicular to each other, b does not have a component uh, that projects onto a. So I get a b times the cosine of 90 degrees because that's a 90 degree angle, and since cosine of 90 is 0, that's equal to 0. So the dot product of perpendicular vectors is 0. The dot product of parallel vectors is just the product of their, 
um, of their magnitudes. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about cross products. We'll get to these a little bit later uh, in the course, but there's something called a cross product. And that tells us something about not only the, um, the product of the two vectors, but uh, a, an idea of the direction of, of the rotation of a pair of vectors. And what I mean by that is if I have vector A and vector B, again, so here's my vector B, here's my vector A, and I have an angle between them, the cross product is defined as the product of the magnitude of the vectors times the sine of the angle between them. So that's the magnitude, and then the direction is determined by something called the right-hand rule. And here's where the rotation part comes in, because if I have a, um, a vector A that's being cross-multiplied into vector B, then my thumb is pointing in the direction, the thumb of my right hand is pointing in the direction of the cross product vector. So I align my hand with A, I sweep it into B, and that tells me the direction. If I were doing B cross A, that would be the opposite direction. So the direction is determined by uh, how we multiply these um, vectors together. And you're going to find out when we start talking about cross product exportation is where this is going to come into play uh, quite a bit. So the magnitude is just given by this, and the, uh, and the direction is given by our right-hand rule. Um, I want to point out, though, that if this is the, the opposite of our cross products, if we have two vectors that are in the same direction, the angle between them is zero, right? which means that the cross product is zero because the sine of zero is zero. And if I have two vectors that are oriented 90 degrees to one another, then the product of their cross product is AB because I have my sine of 90 which is 1. Okay, so here we had a sine of 0, which is 0. And here we have sine of 90, which is 1, which is the opposite of the cosine. Um, so if I have perpendicular vectors, um, we get a maximum cross product. And if I have parallel vectors, we get uh, a 0 value for the cross product. All right, so on your homework assignment this week, you're going to be working on uh, some of your vectors. And again, I want you to use your um, your strategy, solution, and significance when you're working these problems. A lot of them are going to be graphical, but even if they're not graphical, I want you to, uh, uh, to, draw, uh, to draw these components. And to give you an example of, of uh, what that might look like, you know, if you're given a vector, um, let's say one of your problems is you're given a vector um, B, which has a length of 5, and uh, an angle of 53 degrees, and you're given a vector um, A that has a length of 10 and an angle of 30 degrees. I didn't draw that to scale, but that's not going to matter very much. Part of your strategy will be making the pictures uh, that put these things together. And then when you do your solution, you can do the mathematics of what you need to do to solve that problem, and then you're going to do your significance. So don't forget your um, strategy for problem solving when you're doing these things, translating what you're getting, given in words into pictures, and then doing the full solution. All right, good luck.